Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This video will introduce you to improper integrals. We will discover that there are, there are two types of improper integrals, convergent and divergent. We are going to get to know what these things are through a couple of examples. First example is the function 1 over x squared. Let's take a look at the graph. And we are going to take a look at a definite integral. We are going to integrate f of x from 1 to 2. As you recall, one way to think about definite integrals is the area under a graph. So we are looking for the area of the blue region. Please pause the video at this time to solve this definite integral. The steps are fairly straightforward. Let's see how you did. We apply, well, one way to do this is to rewrite 1 over x squared as x to the negative second power. We apply the reverse power rule and the first fundamental theorem of calculus we end up with 1 minus 1 half. So the area of the blue region is 1 half unit. Let's take a look at another definite integral. This time, let's integrate not from 1 to 2, but from 1 to 3. You can see the area extending to the right under the graph f of x. This will also be a very straightforward integral. The first steps are going to be the exact same. And this time we end up not with 1 minus 1 half, but with 1 minus 1 third. If we keep extending the bound of the definite integral to the right, we will accumulate more area. Consider the definite integral from 1 to 7. We're going to add more area, but as you can see, there isn't a whole lot of area that is going to be uh, added. So this result shouldn't be a whole lot more than the definite integral from 1 to 3. Let's take a look. 1 minus 1 seventh. It's going to follow the exact same pattern as the previous two examples. This pattern will hold up no matter what the, the right bound is of the definite integral. If we integrate just from 1 to b, for instance, the final answer, the area under the graph, no matter what b is, is going to be 1 minus 1 over b. That's even if b is 1,000 or 10,000 or 10 billion. The definite integral is going to be 1 minus 1 over whatever that number is. Well, let's keep going to the right. Let's think of this instead as a limit. So the limit as b approaches infinity of f of x, of the definite integral from 1 to b of f of x. The result is the same as when we integrated from 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 7. This is going to be the limit as of 1 minus 1 over b. This time, though, we're going to let b approach infinity. You can probably see what's going to happen next. As b approaches infinity, the fraction reduces essentially to 0. And we get a final answer of just 1, which is a strange result. If we extend the right bound of the definite integral off into infinity, it might uh, seem reasonable that we will continue adding area forever and that the area should also be infinity. Uh, as we can see from this result, though, we get a number, the number 1. The area under the graph is equal to 1. Let's take a look at a uh, second example. It's going to be very similar to the first example, but with a different result, a different conclusion. The second example is f of x equals 1 over x. Here's the graph, very similar to the previous graph. And we are going to, again, look at the definite integral from 1 to 2. There's the area under the graph. Here is the setup. Why don't you press pause? 
to find the value of this definite integral. All right, let's see how you did. Again, we will take an antiderivative, apply the first fundamental theorem of calculus. The natural log of one is equal to zero, and we get a result of the natural log of two. So the area under this graph is the natural log of two, which incidentally is roughly equal to 0.69. Let's take a look at a second definite integral involving the same function. This time, let's integrate from one to three. And last time we got a final result of natural log of two, we're gonna get a very similar result here. Natural log of three minus natural log of one is just the natural log of three. If we integrate all the way to seven, we're gonna accumulate more area under the graph. So here's the definite integral from one to seven. That area under the graph is going to be the natural log, equal to the natural log of seven, which is approximately 1.95. If we generalize the right bound of this definite integral, we will get the result of the natural log of b. No matter what the value of b is, the area under the graph will be the natural log of b. So the definite integral from one to a billion is going to equal the natural log of billion. The limit of this definite integral as b approaches infinity then is going to be equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of b. Well, this limit extends uh, forever. It does not exist. This is equal to, you could think of this as the natural log of infinity, which is going to increase without bound. This limit simply does not exist, which to be honest is what we would expect from a definite integral that continues on forever. So let's compare the two examples side by side. F of X so equals one over X squared and F of X equals one over X. We took, a lim uh, we took a look at the definite integrals from one to B as b approached infinity. These two examples, incidentally, are examples of what are called improper integrals. They are definite integrals where one of the endpoints of the interval uh, approaches something, either infinity or a number. It's essentially the limit of a definite integral if the limit pertains to one of the bounds of the interval. With these two examples, however, uh, we got different results. In the first example, we got a numeric answer. This limit existed and it was equal to one. The second limit did not exist at all. Uh, these are the two different types of improper integrals. The first one is called a convergent integral, that is when the limit exists, and the second is called a divergent improper integral. It is when an improper integral uh, doesn't exist or goes on forever without bound. The area goes on forever without bound. So let's take a look at our uh, definitions. The first one is just pulled from Wikipedia. You can read it if you'd like. It summarizes uh, what's already been said and then a textbook definition of convergent and divergent improper integrals. That's all for now. Uh, more videos to follow that further explore these wonderful concepts. Bye-bye.